standing wave ratio. How to obtain standing wave ratio directly from its mist shot? We have seen how to allocate the point of the impedance on this mist shot. We said that the first point is that to normalize the impedance such that the input impedance could be Z load over Z naught. Then the value of Z load will be uh, determined in real part and imaginary part. According to the real part, we are moving along the real axis until we reach to the real part. Then at this real part, we are moving at the constant R circle. On the other hand, we are moving along the imaginary axis to obtain the value of the imaginary bar until we reach to the imaginary bar. Then we move along the arc of the constant imaginary bar. The intersection between the constant real bar and the constant imaginary arc represent the normalized impedance. Then, from the center of this message chart, you connect a light from the center to the point of the impedance, and we draw a circle whose center is the center of this message chart. This circle is a constant gamma or constant reflection coefficient. Okay, effectively. The input impedance along the transmission line is varying along this constant gamma, such that at the load impedance, the input impedance it would be Z load. As long as we are moving away from the load towards the generator, we are moving clockwise along the constant gamma reflection coefficient. When we move a distance equal lambda by 2, we return back to the same point of Z load. And then we start once again after lambda by 2 until we reach lambda and so on. So the input impedance after a certain distance, it would be pure real value. And because we are here greater than 1, so, in this case, the normalized impedance would be pure real greater than unique. Or, in other words, would be our normalized maximum, which we can obtain from this Z load. And, after lambda by 4 from this point, we obtain our normalized minimum. Effectively, the distance which we move from Z load until we intersect with the real axis, this distance corresponds to the distance to the first maximum along the standing wave ratio. And after the first maximum by lambda by 4, we reach to the first minimum. And we can read the value of the standing wave ratio directly as the value of the R normalized maximum. So the value of R normalized maximum corresponds directly to the value of the standing wave ratio. So by reading the value here, we can determine the standing wave ratio at this point. And to read the distance from the load to the first maximum, we extend this line, which coming from the origin to Z load normalized, we extend this line and read along the axis wavelengths toward generator, what is the value, and then this value here 
is 0.25 lambda. So 0.25 lambda minus this reading will correspond to the distance which we should move from the load such that to reach to the first maximum. And as I mentioned, to reach to the first minimum, we will add to this distance another lambda by 4. Okay. As an example for applying uh, Smith's chart, assuming that we have Z load equal 100 ohms plus J 50 ohms, and this load is connected to a transmission line with a characteristic impedance 50 ohm. So the normalized load impedance in this case would be Z load over Z node would equal 2 plus G1. So the normalized impedance it would be 2 plus G1. Now by allocating this normalized input impedance or this normalized load impedance as this message chart, we move along the x axis from 0 to 1 to 2, assuming that this is 2. And this 2, we will have a constant R circle with 2. So the point Z log normalized will lie at a point on this. Constant circuit R equal to. Now the imaginary part is G1, positive G1. So positive, we are moving in the upper half of the Smith chart until we reach to the value 1. So this arc corresponds to G1. The intersection between R equal to and x equal 1 corresponds to z load normalized 2 plus g1. So this is the location of the load impedance on this mixture or normalized load impedance on this mixture. Once we determine the location of the load impedance, we are going to draw the constant gamma circle from the center. Of the Smith chart to the load, this is the radius of constant gamma circle, and we draw this green circle which corresponds to the constant gamma circle of this load. Now, it is required to obtain the input impedance at a distance d equal lambda by 4. So, d equal lambda by 4 means that 2 beta d equals by so lambda by 4 means that we are moving along the constant gamma circle by an angle by so this is the input impedance or the location of the input impedance after a length lambda by 4 and this can also be obtained as follows by determining the intersection of this line with the axis wavelength toward generator, we find a value here. Then we add to this value 0.25, so we can find the value after 0.25 at this point. Then we draw a line from this line from this point to the origin of this message chart and the intersection of this line will correspond to the input impedance at this distance lambda by 4. Okay? And by determining the intersection point, we can obtain the corresponding constant R circle and the corresponding arc x so the corresponding arc circle in this case is 0.4 and the arc is in the lower side of the smith chart so it is negative 
and the arc in this case it was 0.2 with negative sign so it is 0.4 minus j 0.2 this is a normalized the impedance at a distance lambda by 4 now by multiplying this normalized impedance by z naught which is 50 ohm we can obtain the input impedance at distance lambda by 4 from the load as 50 by 0.4 would be 20 and 50 multiplied by 0.2 it would be 10 so 20 minus j 10 ohms at a distance d equal 3 over 8 lambda guide in a similar steps we are going to extend the line from the center to the point of the impedance and extend this line and read the distance here what equals on the scale of wavelength to our generator then we add to this distance the value 3 over 8 lambda so add this value we add 3 over 8 by adding 3 over 8 we reach to this point then from this point we are going to draw a line from this point to the origin the intersection with the constant reflection circle will correspond to the input impedance at this distance this intersection it can be read as a constant r value and the constant x r so in this case at the distance 3 over 8 lambda guide this intersection was uh, 0 0.212 lambda and then we add 3 over 8 lambda it should be noted here a very interesting point the scale is coming from 0 to 0.25 and from 0.25 to 0.5 okay now if we are going to add 3 over 8 plus 0.212 this will be greater than 0.5 so uh, for example 3, point, uh, 3 over 8 is uh, 1 over 4 0.25 plus 0.125 it is 0 0.375 0 0.375 lambda guide so if we add 0.375 to 0.212 it would be 0.587 which is greater than 0.5 so we subtract 0.5 so the remaining part it would be 0 0.087 so after adding 0.375 we are moving to the point 0.587 which is effectively 0 0.5 plus 0 0.087 so the location in this case is at 0 0.087 lambda and from this 0 0.087 lambda we are going to extend the line from this point to the center of this message chart and the intersection in this case with the constant gamma circle will correspond to the input impedance in this case so in this case the input impedance or the normalized input impedance it would be 0.5 the circle here would be 0.5 and the arc here it would be j.5 by multiplying by z0 so the input impedance it would be 25 plus j25 ohms now at a distance d equal lambda by 2 lambda by 2 it means that we moved along the constant gamma circle a complete circle so we return back to the original point so the input impedance at z equal minus lambda guide by 2 would be the same z load which equal 2 plus j1 or after 
multiplying by Z0, it would be 100 ohm plus G50 ohms. Another example on uh, this method chart of the admittance. Assuming that we have a load admittance 8 millisiemens minus J 40 millisiemens, which is connected to a transmission line with characteristic impedance 50 ohm, or in other words, with characteristic admittance 1 over 50, which is 20 millisiemens. So in this case, the normalized admittance would be 8 over 20 minus J 4 over 20. So the normalized admittance would be 0.4 minus J 0.2. In this case, the value of the real axis would be moving from 0 to infinity. So there is zero in this case and this is infinity. Effectively this is the reverse of the impedance smith chart. So we are moving from zero to point four. So here is a constant circuit of uh, G equal point four and we look for the arc minus G point two. As we said in the admittance Smith chart, the negative susceptance in the upper half. So negative J is coming from the upper half. So this is negative J. So the intersection of negative J.2 with the real uh, conductance point 0.4 would be correspond to this point, which is the normalized admittance YL. Now, after lambda guide by 4, we move an angle by towards the generator. Should be noted here, uh, the rotation direction is not changing. So, the motion towards the generator also in clockwise. So, in this case, the admittance at a distance lambda by 4, would be the point A and by reading the real value and the imaginary value we can say that the real value intersects with the circuit G equal to and the imaginary factor or the imaginary bar intersect with the arc G1 so the input admittance after lambda guide by 4 would be 2 plus G1. If we are looking for the value of the admittance, we multiply it by Y naught. So Y at distance minus lambda by 4 equal 20 multiplied by 2, 40 millisiemens plus G, 20 millisiemens. Now in a similar way, we can obtain the admittance at the distance 3 over 8 lambda. We look at the distance from the generator at this point, and we add to this distance a distance 3 over 8, and we can find that this value is greater than 0.5, so we extract 0.5 to find out the location after lambda over 8 or after 3 over 8 lambda guide then we take the line from this point to the origin of this message chart the intersection with constant gamma will correspond to the input admittance in this case so the input admittance in this case would be 1 because it lies on uh, the circle G equal 1 minus G1 and once again remember that the upper half in the admittance chart is negative so this 1 minus G1 multiplying it by Y naught 
So it would be 20 millisiemens minus J20 millisiemens. After moving a distance lambda by 2, we return back to the original point. So at a distance lambda by 2, the input admittance would be the same as the original load admittance would be 0.4 minus J.2, which is 8 millisiemens minus J4 millisiemens. So this is an example of using uh, the admittance chart. Uh, we have seen how the short circuit can be represented as uh, inductance or capacitance such that the input impedance of short circuit transmission line is GZ0 than beta L and we said that if beta L is less than lambda by 4 it is equivalent to inductive and if it is greater than lambda over 4 and less than lambda over 2 it would be equivalent to a capacitor uh, we are going to see this now by using the sensor chart uh, in this example use a short circuit section of air filled transverse electromagnetic wave 50 ohm transmission line to create an impedance Z input equal minus J 25 ohms at a frequency 10 gigahertz so we are talking about air field air field it means that epsilon r equal 1 it means that the speed of light would be the speed of light increased base 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 the wavelength would be the free space wavelength and the characteristic impedance is 50 ohm and it is required to obtain input impedance equal minus J25 ohm or in other words it is required to obtain normalized input impedance equal minus J.5 okay at a frequency 10 gigahertz the short circuit at the load point correspond to input impedance equal 0 so, as this message chart, Z load in this case would be zero. And zero here is the starting point of this message chart is the left hand. Okay. Now we are moving toward the generator or we are moving away from the load. So we are moving clockwise. And effectively, in this case, the constant gamma circle is the outer circle of this mesh chart. Because if we connect a line from the origin of this mesh chart to the point of Z load, and we draw a circle, this circle will be the outer circle of this mesh chart, which means that the magnitude of the reflection coefficient at any point is unique, but the phase is different. Okay? So, in this case, we are moving along the constant gamma circle towards the generator until we reach to the required Z input. And the required Z input normalized is minus G.5. So, Starting from zero, this is positive gx, this is positive gx, this is positive gx, this is positive infinity, this is negative infinity, this is negative gx, negative gx, this is negative gx1 or negative g1, this is negative g half, this is the required point. So, to introduce an input impedance equal minus G25 ohms we have to move along the transmission line from this point to this point effectively the first half corresponds to 0.25 uh, lambda 
and the remaining part should be red. So the distance here is actually 0.426 lambda guide. So the lens which is required to the transmission line such that the input impedance is minus G25 or would be 0.426 lambda guide. And lambda guide can be determined as the speed of light in this medium, which is C, over the frequency. So C over F, 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8, over the frequency, 10 multiplied by 10 to the power 9, so it is 0 0.03, or in other words, 3 centimeters. So the wavelength lambda guide in this case is 3 centimeters. We will multiply 3 centimeters by 0.426 to obtain the length of the required transmission line section, which is 1.28 centimeters. Okay. So this short circuit is seen after a distance 1.2 centimeters from air field transmission line as an equivalent impedance minus J25 ohms. This is at frequency 10 gigahertz. Another example assumes that we have open circuit transmission line and this transmission line has a characteristic impedance 75 ohms and it is required to design transmission line section with such open circuit load to have an input admittance equal G over 175 Siemens. If the characteristic impedance is 75 ohm, so the characteristic impedance, uh, admittance is 1 over 75 ohms. So in this case, the required normalized input admittance is J1. And also we are talking about air field transmission line and the frequency is 10 gigahertz. So the wavelength is 3 centimeters as in the previous example. Okay. In this case, we are going to use the admittance chart, the admittance Smith chart. And remember that in the admission, in the admittance Smith chart, this is, is the zero and this is the infinity. And the, the negative in the upper half and the positive in the lower half. For open circuit, the input impedance is infinity, so the admittance is zero. So the location of Y load normalized in this case would be at zero. So this is the zero of the admittance chart. Okay. Now we are moving toward the generator, or we are moving away from the load. So we are moving it clockwise. And it is required to move until we reach Y input normalized would be G1. And once again, the constant gamma circle in this case is the out most outer circle of the Smith chart, which is the line which has a radius from the center to the load. So this is a constant gamma circle, right? Now we are moving along the constant gamma circle towards the generator until we reach G1. G1 is positive, and remember that we are here in the lower half in the admittance chart positive. So we are moving until we reach to the value B normalized equal 1, effectively 
this distance corresponds to lambda by 8. So this distance corresponds to 0.125 lambda guy. And lambda guy at the frequency 10 gigahertz for air field line, it is 3 centimeters. So it would be 0.125 multiplied by 3 centimeters. So the required open circuit transmission line section in this case to obtain such admittance is 0.375. Five centimeters. Okay. All right.